Hello everyone, my name is Ayuko Oshino. I'm an associate professor at School of Life Science and Technology at TITEC. Today, I would like to take a brief moment of yours to talk about what we do and what we are interested in pursuing in our lab. I hope this will help you understand what are the things being done at TIDEC, and hopefully one of you may consider joining us on this end of floor. Okay, so let's dive into science. I am going to share my screen and I hope you can see them. So our lab, we are interested in focusing on a small particle and vesicle called exosomes. And this right here, you can see a green lighted up organ. This is mouse lung. And here what they have is they have uptaken many, many particles and vesicles, exosomes derived from cancer. So what we have found, which I will talk to you a lot more in detail in the next couple slides, is that we have found that cancer-derived exosomes, cancer would secrete out the small particles, exosomes, and those exosomes would go to a future site of metastasis, and they would change their organ to a favorable one so that they are now capable of allowing the cancer cell to metastasize to that organ. And this right here, you can see the impact of how much exosomes are being uptaken in each organ. So let's see more about what are exosomes. So exosomes, I just mentioned to you that cancer secrete exosomes, but not only cancer, but exosomes are secreted by all types of cells. And they are 30 to 150 nanometer in size. So they are around the size of viruses, so very tiny. And because they are secreted by all type of cells, if you take a pair of blood, those exosome will be a combination from multiple organs and cells. And exosomes were first thought as a garbage bag, so cells would pa uh, package their unwanted biological properties and they would secrete out as an exosome. However, most recently, those exosomes would circulate around our body and it has been found that those exosomes could be uptaken by another cell and now they are being focused as a novel cell-cell communication tool. What are included in exosomes? There are many biological properties, such as proteins, RNAs, lipids, and even double-stranded DNAs are found in exosomes. Many uh, researchers may think that um, exosomes are like a mini version of the original cells. However, um, it is also known that exosomal packaging is highly selective. So even if a protein A is highly abundant, highly expressed in a cell, exosome may only be packaging those protein in a very low level and vice versa could be happening. And this exosomes most recently has have had a high expectation as a biomarker. And there are a couple reasons for that. One is that they contain biological properties, just like I mentioned. Two is their abundance. So right here, you can see that I have written within one ml of plasma, you can have up to 10 to the 12th order of exosomes. So they are highly abundant. And also, three, they are highly stable. If you keep the plasma in minus 80, then you will be able to collect and analyze their exosomal properties 10 years, 30 years, 50 years later. Okay, so these are some aspects of exosome as being um, high expected as a biomarker and uh, for many properties of exosomes. So let me show you how well do, you do they do as a biomarker. 
This is uh, one experiment that we have done and we have uh, reported this last year. We took plasma derived exosome from 77 patients and 43 normal uh, healthy controls. And this 120 samples would be mixed up um, and each of the samples have been run as a proteomic analysis and each sample will have a protein list of around 600 to up to 1000 protein lists. And we have done collecting 120 samples, uh, machine learning, and long story short, we just separated them into 75% training set and 25% test set. And the test set result came out like this. So after training for 75% of the samples, we have asked the new 25% of the samples, asking whether having this protein list is a tumor or having this protein list is a healthy control. And within 19 samples that were tumor, we were able to say that 18 of them were tumor. And within 10 samples that were non-tumor, so healthy control, we were able to say that nine of them were healthy control. And we missed one sample in both groups, but um, that came up as a 95% sensitivity and 90% specificity. So showing a proof of concept that plasma-derived exosomal proteomics analysis are capable of defining cancer and non-cancer. So it, we didn't stop right here. We were even um, able to profile and classify primary tumor of all origin. So each dot stands for a patient and we were able to seek for stage one through stage four patients. So stage one would be early cancer and stage four would be advanced uh, patient who would have a metastatic organ. And within these samples, regardless of stage, we were able to cluster each patient within same primary tumor. So we were able to cluster them by cancer types, classifying primary tumors. And this uh, would be a proof of concept that plasma derived cancer exosomal protein list are capable of defining cancer or non-cancer and even classify which kind of cancer they have. So this is the biomarker part, but I would like to also walk you through that cancer-derived exosome also have a functional properties to advance cancer metastasis. So I've been talking mainly about plasma-derived exosome up until now, but I would like for you to shift your mind and focus on cancer cell-derived exosomes now. So what we have done is that we have collected cancer-derived exosomes from cell culture. And this right here, these exosomes were collected by breast cancer cells that only metastasize to the lung. And what we have found was that those exosomes, they would be collected, labeled in green and injected in mice circulation. 24 hours later, we would find those exosomes localizing in the lung, but not in other organs. And similarly, we have done similar experiments using brain metastatic cancer cell exosome. And those exosomes were labeled in green and injected in mice 24 hours later, because they are brain metastatic cancer cell derived exosome, they would go to the brain, but not to the other organs. So we have found that cancer derived exosome localized to future metastatic sites. Do they only go there and do nothing? No, they actually change the environment as well. So what we have done is after injecting exosomes, we have injected non-lung metastatic cancer cells. And this time we used bone tropic cancer derived exosomes, which normally without exosome treatment would not metastasize the lung. You don't see any signal going to the lung. However, bone metastatic cancer cell with exosome pretreatment 
prior to cancer cell arrival, we were now capable of having bone metastatic cancer cells metastasized to the lungs. So cancer cells, which are not capable of normally metastasizing to the lung, are now metastasizing to the lung because exosomes were pre-localized in the lung and changed their environment to a favorable site for cancer to metastasize. We have shown this to as a lung and liver metastatic potential in 2015, and for brain metastasis, similar um, organ, organ changes are happening by cancer exosome. We have shown this in 2019. So what we have shown is that cancer cell-derived exosomes alter the organ condition to a favorable environment for metastasis. So right now in our lab, not only cancer and metastasis, we are also interested in exosomal functional properties and biomarker potential for autism spectrum disorder, also schizophrenia, obstetric complications such as preeclampsia, and aging and Alzheimer's disease. And not only focusing on uh, disorders and um, and diseases, we are also interested in looking at biological properties of exosomes such as exosomal heterogeneity. So these are some things that we are focusing on in our lab right now. And so thanks for watching. And if you'd like to know more about my research, please check out the links in the description box. So this is the brief summary of what we are doing in our lab and what we are interested. Bye.